Hey, welcome back. Quick follow-up to an oversight I made in the first video about this little CNC lathe accessory. I'd like to address the five pound grill in this room, what everyone is asking about. Will it turn brass? I mean steel. Will my router turn steel? This is just a piece of cold rolled steel. Maybe not the nicest material to use in a machine touring test. Sorry, I meant turning test, but it should be fine to vet the setup. And just so no one thinks I'm pulling a fast one, that this is a real test on steel, I ask you to please consider the results of this magnet test. Evident to even the most casual of observers, magnet is stuck. This is steel. Quick announcement. It's recently come to my attention that a significant portion of my viewers prefer not wearing pants. Which is cool, totally cool, I'm not judging, but it is getting cold out. And to help you keep warm, I'm happy to announce this old Tony hoodies and long sleeve shirts. Keeping the graphics to the point on these. And you can also get this logo in regular short sleeves too if you're one of those I like to go swimming in frozen lakes in the dead of winter kind of person. In addition, for you cat people out there, we've got these. So don't wear pants, no skin off my back, but do stay warm. These, by the way, are engineered to work in layers, so be sure to get a short sleeve, a long sleeve, and a hoodie. Oh, almost forgot, to keep you decent in public and out of jail, you can now also get stickers. FYI, these stickers are five inches tall, which is way more than enough for me, but you know, get two or three if, well, if you have additional requirements. Anyway, let's get back to cutting this steel. Now, I haven't tried this yet, what you're looking at is the real first test. Holy poop, it's actually doing it. What you're looking at here is a four thou depth of cut and four thou feed per revolution. I'm dropping the OD by 20 thou, I think. Mach 4 calculates the number of passes based on my depth of cut. I did fiddle with the spindle override a bit, just out of curiosity, you might hear that while it's running. All right, good first test. It did actually remove material. Surface finish certainly isn't winning any prizes, but that probably has a little bit to do with the insert I'm using. That's the same insert for aluminum we saw in the last video. It's very sharp, very pointy, very positive. I'm talking so positive like its friends can't even stand it anymore. Let's try something a little more aggressive. This is going 50% higher on the depth of cut using the same feed rate. Not bad. You can hear it bogging down a little bit compared to the first run. Oh, I forgot the finish pass is half the original depth of cut. Let's push it even harder. This is 8 thou depth of cut, so twice what we started with, and a higher feed rate, about 6 thou per rev. Motor is bogged down, but keeping a stiff upper lip. The chips look decent. I'm going to stop pushing it for now. I mean, the next logical step is to go even harder, but I fear if I do that, I'll stall the motor and break the tool. Again, that's a brazed carbide insert. It doesn't mind a high chip load, but stalling in the work would certainly break it. I hope you all know by now that I do just about anything for love, but I won't do that. For now, I've got other plans for this insert. I'd like to do something with one more move to it. Instead of swoopy shapes like last time, let's use the taper wizard and sharpen this pencil of mine. Cut a cone in the end, a really large chamfer. The roughing passes from the wizard are XY steps, or XZ steps in the case of a lathe. It won't actually interpolate the cone angle until it gets to the finish pass. And there we have it a 90 degree cone with a not so accurately zeroed z-axis. I don't think I accounted for my facing cuts. That's why there is no point there. And speaking of no point, no, you don't need a CNC lathe to make this shape. A manual lathe would do it just fine. But I'm testing its ability to cut steel, which so far is mediocre, on cold rolled anyway. But you know what would be fun? Turning this cone into a make pretend deburring tool.
So because I wanted to be able to see and film what the router was doing, and I wanted to climb cut, I'm going to end up with a left-handed deburring tool when this is done. The flutes it's cutting are in the quote-unquote wrong direction, or not the traditional direction. All right, let's see if it'll deburr the inside of this scrap piece of brass. I missed a couple of flutes. There was obviously something wrong with my G-code, but I think I've made my point. <clears throat> well, this just in, the insert is broken, and I'm quite the bonehead. Did I run all my steel tests with a broken insert? Has my entire life been a lie? Okay, I've eyeballed the center height. Let's face this and see how close I got. This will be a lot of passes to sneak up on that saw cut face. And that looks decent and I can confirm the insert is still in one piece. This is an eighth thou depth of cut and fourth thou feed. I hope to turn this down a smidge and chamfer the end. All right, so that finish is a little anticlimactic, about the same as before. Now I'm not sure when that other insert broke, but I'll know when this one did. 12th thou depth of cut. Okay, it didn't like that big chamfer, but 20 thou depth of cut. Okay, I see you want to play hardball. 30 thou depth of cut. Hmm. 40 thou depth of cut. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thanks for watching.